Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about the invisible black woman. I'm Lady Bounce. I'm Kryptonite, y'all. All All right, so you want to, where you want to go with this? Okay, here we go. First, let's start off with, I'm going to, Read this passage and then I'm going to expand on it a little bit as to my purpose of reading it. Okay. And how it pertains to today's subject. Okay. So here we go. Live your senses. As I grew up, everything started getting gray and dull. I could still remember the amazing intensity of the world I lived in as a child, but I thought the dulling of perception was an inevitable consequence of age. Just as the lens of the eye is bound gradually to dim. I didn't understand that clarity is in the mind. My toddler daughter has a pair of pink rain boots that are her favorite shoes. The pink rain boots give her puddle stomping power, which brings her utter glee. Does she care that she is getting covered in mud from head to toe? No, she doesn't. Does she care that the water is going over the edge of the boots and soaking her feet? No, she doesn't. She takes off her shirt and struts around bare chested with her brothers. She loves the dirt the puddles, the rain, and the sky. Maybe those pink boots really are magical. If only we adults could have one-tenth of this joy and enthusiasm. We look at things, glance at things, all the time. But do we really pay attention? Do we really live in our surroundings? Or do we just exist in them? In order to clean the mirror of the mind, we must first renounce the senses. But we cannot renounce the senses if we have not ever really engaged them in the first place. This evening, practice living fully into the senses, and then you will be prepared to enter the interior silence. Notice how that time in dark, silent contemplation actually sharpens and heightens the vividness of perception. Now, I'm reading that, and that is kind of the lighter side of what we're talking about today Mm -hmm. because i want to talk about living in the senses as far as observing your surroundings and being acutely aware of what's wrong and being acutely aware of how you feel in that moment and sensing that something is wrong because you don't always see it to know that it's not right. Sometimes something being wrong is not so much what you see as it is so much of what you feel. It's not like your spidey senses. Kind of like your spidey senses, like that sixth sense that might be going off that we far too often do not pay attention to and wish we would have if, if we were, you know, if, if, we were in the right frame of mind at the time. And to be quite honest with you, and I'm, I'm, I feel like there are times when the Lord speaks to us. Okay. Okay. And I believe that that sixth sense sometimes is exactly what that is. It's the Lord saying, Hey, stop it. God's trying to tell you (laughs) something. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But I'm just saying though, you know, I think that, you know, when we talk to ourselves, I feel like that's us having a conversation with God, especially when you talking to yourself and you keeping it really 100 with yourself. Right. I really do believe that's the Lord saying, you know, you messing up. Right. And you, you, and you calling yourself. No, I know you messing up. I can feel it. And I can't let you hear my voice because only angels can hear my voice and survive. So I got to talk to you in a voice that's calming to you. So it might as well be your own. Hmm. Unless it's your grandma. But I'm just saying. Right. (laughs) So now, having said that, our topic of discussion today is really a combination of two things. Okay. Okay. We are talking about, um, We are talking about the invisible black woman on two separate stages. One being in the medical field and the other being in society. Okay. Okay. So there was recently an article um, that has been floating around Facebook. And um, should we pull it up? We we don't need to call names or nothing. That's not necessary. No, because I mean the story went so viral, right? Yes, yeah. Everybody has heard about it. the The young lady that passed away was twenty five years old. She went to a hospital. I believe it was in Wisconsin. I think I want to say I believe it was in Wisconsin. She went to a hospital that is um that really has a good reputation, from what I understand. 
um she went there uh her i believe um it was said that her sister drove her there in the beginning and she was dismissed she was complaining of chest pains and she was made to sit in the waiting area for about five or six hours um then then she decided to seek medical attention elsewhere and i believe on her route to going elsewhere Mm -hmm. she collapsed was taken back to the hospital she had just left and then died yes so there have been many studies that have shown that as far as the medical medical profession is concerned black people but black women in general are ignored and not taken seriously or considered to be uh what's the word that i'm looking for worthy of care hypochondriacs okay is what i'm trying to say yes so now what i can't understand is when you have multiple studies that show this Mm -hmm. as being a statistic right why what are we doing to change it and why is it not being changed and then and then also it's Mm. common knowledge that anywhere you go when you complain of chest pains you are automatically taken to the er taken to the back hooked up yeah taking the tree yeah yeah as they call it right i mean yes sometimes the ball gets dropped right true enough but five or six hours though yeah and i i I wonder and, and i know hospitals are busy places and sick people come in like through the emergency room door you may not see them coming through emergency but five hours seems excessive to have anybody waiting for anything like it ain't i mean it's it's milwaukee wisconsin it's not like it's chicago where somebody's getting shot every two seconds your hospital's not that busy that she sat there for six hours coughing and holding her chest and y'all just like oh well keep waiting keep waiting how i'm like how did that happen where are the nurses where are you know someone to say somebody by the way she's complaining of chest pain exactly and i'm more than positive and then that's another thing too because i read like a lot of people seem to glance seem to overlook that um that she had been been waiting that long and almost victim blamed like why would you sit there for that long why didn't you go someplace sooner you should have said something you should have did something depending on on her mind state and the level of pain she was in, she may not have been physically able to leave after an hour and go somewhere else. Not just that, but because we are conditioned that black women are mad all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of us consciously make the effort not to be that black chick. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Then you think about, okay, the first time I make a fuss about something, the first time I say I'm unhappy or I try to get attention, right? do you call security on me because you feel like I'm being unruly or I'm being, you know, I'm being a yeah. certain way? Now I'm scared. Are you going to call the police? Then I'm not going to get the attention I seek anyway. And on right. top of that, I'm being handled and handcuffed and thrown out. You yeah, know what I like mean? Like the other woman in New York that that happened to where she was same situation waiting in the waiting room of the er to be seen she kept going up to the counter hey i'm in pain i'm not feeling well i need to be seen and they consider her unruly call security call the police and then in their attempts to get her in handcuffs she has a heart attack and she dies wow but she was she was doing what anybody would do in that situation i need help help me help me help me but instead of them helping her they consider her a threat unruly and did all of these things which ultimately caused her death right and it's so crazy you know you hear about people saying oh you know that that our the color of our skin is a weapon the darker you are the more dangerous you are absolutely you know that's absolutely ludicrous and then i mean it for it to not just be an issue for it to be an issue not just in law enforcement but everywhere across the board it doesn't matter where you are Mm -hmm. grocery store gas station hospital your complexion is a weapon the darker you are the more dangerous you are 
Yeah. And then you you can't you can't be a person in distress. You're just an angry black person right. who needs to be controlled. Right. That's crazy. Well, and you can even see it in in terms of which we see it right now really really playing out with the opioid epidemic. Oh, yeah. It's a disease now. Need treatment. This yes. is a disease. Now it's a disease. It's a problem, but when it was when it was us. Honey, I saw I saw <laughs> an article I saw an article uh just last night where they was talking about some doctor was found in a cocaine apartment. Nigga, that bitch was in the crack house. What you talking about? A cocaine apartment. <laughs> a what cocaine the hell apartment. is a cocaine apartment? No, this chick was in the trap house. This bitch was in the crack house smoking rocks. Yes. What do you mean? A cocaine apartment. A cocaine what? apartment. Is that what they call it now in in in, in condominiums where everyone we, does lines? We, we, do, moved, we, we don't, moved up in the world. We don't smoke crack. No, crack we, is for them. No, we sniff lines. This right. is a cocaine apartment. <sighs> a crack house is for crack pipes and crack smokers. Yes. We snort it. Right. <laughs> what else? We don't have that filthy cheap crack. We don't habits. we don't do crack. We don't <laughs> we don't mix all say, shit. Crack is wet. Crack, <laughs> crack is wet. <laughs> we don't mix our stuff with baking powder. <laughs> we take it straight to the dome. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine apartment. That we didn't do crack houses. <laughs> okay, <I'm> so <laughs> but, but no, no, but no. Seriously, that is how it is seen. That that there's how somehow it's worded differently. A, yeah, that is, that somehow it's different. Like when and I, I can't lie. When I, you know, doing what I do for a living, I run into a lot of parents who are in the throes of addiction. But when I met the first black parent who was doing meth, my first thought was. We don't do no. meth. What? What yes. on What on earth is yes? What do you mean meth? You hang around too many white people, bro. Right. You got too many male friends. Too many because yeah. you, you can't be doing yeah, like, everything I, I they like, do. We we don't we don't do meth. But he was heavily addicted, and then got his wife addicted, and it was wow. like a crazy thing. And I was like, and then I thought to myself, quit thinking like that. Drugs are drugs. Drugs are bad, no matter what race you, you only, are. But you only but, think about that because they've programmed us to think that exactly. way. Just like crack was a black person's problem. Right. And crack, you go to jail yes, for it. Crack was black people's problem that we yes. were incarcerated for, that we needed to get our shit together because we was just all the way off the hinges. Right. But opioids is the middle class, working class individual's yes. um, addiction right. that is a disease and they need rehabilitation and help. So yes. jail is not going to help them. They need therapy. Right. So we didn't need... Th oh. No, we didn't need no therapy. Okay. Forget the fact that our families was destroyed and our grandmothers and uncles and aunties was all jacked up and, and all we that come shit. From trauma. And it was all in the hood and it was a bunch of, you know, forget all of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not until it's white suburbia where it goes from a criminal issue to... um. A, a disease. social issue. Yes, a social. Yes, it's yeah. A now it's a social yes. issue. It's and a then, social disease. And then, and then, the, and then here's my other issue. Now you know what I'm saying? Because my thing is, you want to put all the black black dudes that was crack dealers. You want to put them in jail, but these opioid uh, distributors, mm -hmm. these these doctors that are getting big payoffs from farm man pharmaceutical companies. And these pharmacists that are distributing this stuff and they're getting big payoffs from pharmaceutical companies and doctors and whatnot, they're not seeing jail time. You're right. not you're not taking away the license of anybody. No. Un unless it's something it was ridiculous. A, well, it was an accident. I'm a doctor. Yeah, no. They brought when me you had drugs when and you I gave them the to only my patients. The only time anybody really is held accountable is when it's ridiculous numbers. Like one doctor had like three thousand prescriptions filled like within a month. Right. For opioids. You know what I'm saying? And right. then, then it was a red flag. You know what I'm saying? But right. they, you know, it's, it's it's not an issue when you prescribing that stuff, though. You know. It's, All right. So back to the question, the issue at hand. So. So, so black the, women, women. Yes. Black women are, by definition, amazing and powerful. We, there was an article that came out two weeks ago that said that we are the most educated group of people in america so why are we still invisible because we have no power how do we, we get it we get first of all that's gonna be hard okay okay because there's too many um 
of the other power that's up there that won't let us get there which was the other thing i had showed sent you a um a video about but yeah there are there are people put in place to make sure that we don't get there you know what i'm saying so we're the the, the fact of the matter is as black women we are finding ways around that because nowadays there's just other we think outside the box right and there's other things that we do that we're good at that we're able to make money so we we getting over it because of our intuitiveness our creativity and our willingness to work and our determination to have something you right. know what i'm saying but if we were to follow the protocol and follow the steps and the powers that be will only let you get so far that's just flat out the tr how that is that's just flat out that's how that is hmm. um but the issue here is how can we become more of especially when it comes to the medical field how can we become more of an advocate for our own health without being judged as a threat by right. the people that are supposed to be helping us. Damn. You know what I mean? Like we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, like we had the, con the discussion earlier that we need to take care of ourselves better. We need to go to the doctor more. We need to do this. We need to do that. Okay. We do that. Mm -hmm. An emergency situation comes up. We go to a doctor, we go to an emergency room to be seen for whatever you know what i'm saying right. we having chest pain but then but we get ignored right so what does it mean if there's a file sitting there that's thick with our complaints and our medical history but because somebody else feels like we're being hypochondriacs or right. because they're because this is what they are taught they're taught that we have a a a higher threshold for pain yeah and a higher threshold heard that. they yes they said this you know they thought yeah. this back when we were slaves or oh, well black people can take it they have a higher threshold for pain right they have a higher endurance for for going out we lazy as hell but we can work from sun up to sundown right you know what i'm saying we 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 have this higher threshold for pain that they can just do whatever and we just complain and we not really hurt we just complain so would that would some of this problem be remedied if we had more people who looked like us in the medical field? Most definitely. That's exactly what we need. More people that look like us because you're not, if you, if you don't, if you don't, if you're, if you're not looking in the mirror then mm -hmm. you kind of don't get it, you know what I'm saying? Like right. if you are, if you are a, if you are a white physician that is taught, well, you know, black people have a higher tolerance for pain. Their skin is a little thicker. Right it's form of brainwashing you you may that don't necessarily make you a racist it just right. means you believe something that right. you were that's, told that's what you know you you function in the realm of what you've been taught and then if exactly. you practice in that manner and then you have that the, mindset and then you have the stereotypes that all black people are confrontational that all black women are mad and angry and upset yeah. when they we don't, don't have their insurance way. so you and ain't gonna yes, get paid if you all, treat them yes and then there's all of that you know yeah. that comes along with it so so when you when you say to someone, hey, I'm really in pain here. I'm really in distress here. I really need some help. But their their response to you was not not give me just a second. Let me get somebody. Tell me what's going on. The right. response is sit down and wait your turn. You're, you're someone to be with you in a minute. Right. Like, come on, man. And That's, in a minute, you know, she's dead. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what type of mess is that? I don't know. That's. And That's real quick, deep. before, because we don't have a whole lot of time, and I did want to touch on this subject. Okay. There was a, there was, um, a situation where a young lady was abducted on the streets of Philadelphia mm -hmm. at night, and her abduction was caught on videotape. Luckily for this young lady, she was found within 72 hours, but she was found in a different state. Um, the guy had switched the license plates on the car. Wow. The only reason they found him was because before... She drove before he drove off with her in the back seat of his car. She smashed out the back window with a hammer, and so he had a piece of plastic on the window. So they were looking for a car that had plastic up. Right. So the police saw the car, checked it, saw him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's how she was caught. The fact of the matter is, had her abduction not been caught on tape, had she not blasted out that window, had she not dropped her cell phone, right? They wouldn't know who she was. Nobody would have been looking for this girl. I mean, flat out. 
Right. Now, this was a post that was on um that was on Facebook. What happened was the way she was able to smash out the window was that she found a hammer. Right. Under the back seat of this man's car. She hit him with the hammer and she drew blood. But instead of continuing to hit him with the hammer, she smashed out the window in the effort to escape. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, I only say this to say that self-preservation should be a priority. Mm-hmm. If you have the opportunity to kill the person that is trying to kill you, please take full advantage of that opportunity and kill that person. Yes. And I'm not an advocate for killing murder or anything like that. Understand the last thing I want to do is be the cause of somebody's death. Right. That's why I'm not a nurse. I don't want the pressure. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but in that case is it's not even murder. It is truly survival and self-defense. And I think so many people are in a situation where at some point they may get the upper hand and are able to do something, but they don't do enough right. to secure. And I'm not victim blaming by no means. Right. I'm not saying but that. But it could have ended much worse. What I'm yes, and what I'm what I'm saying is that we um instead of being concerned or conscious about taking a person's life that's trying to hurt you, kill them. I kill them. Yeah, straight kill them. Because quite honestly, I I wrote on there that that hammer should have met his brain matter, not oh, just the side of his skull. She should have introduced the hammer really, to his brain matter. And on the, the even even in like the, in the justice system, like say he he goes to jail, he only gets probation, or he only gets three or four months. Now he's walking the street so he can do this again. Oh no, that's no no. He, I mean. No. You don't. You well, know. Honestly, never. he's not going to do it again because he's got kidnapping charges. He crossed state lines, right? So that's federal. so. I mean, he'll be in jail, no, but and not just that. No, there was a, there was a sixteen year old that he attempted to kill because he did the same thing to her. He poured bleached on her, and then he poured gasoline on her, wow. and I'm and then he then he went to dig her grave, and that's how she escaped because he was busy trying to dig her grave. Luckily, wow. he just luckily he hadn't set her on fire yet. He was he decided to dig the grave first. Thank God, because now she's alive. You know wow. what I'm saying? So that's how that went down. That but is I crazy. recent I recently um told my my child about different ways that I would like for her to try and protect herself. Mm-hmm. And um you can do in self-defense classes and everything and CCWs and that's cool and all. But seriously, and you know, if you got an old school grandma or whatever, she probably told you about the hat pin and the lapel. And how you had that straight pin and somebody messaged you, pull out that straight pin and you stick them with it. Absolutely. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Get you a piece of gauze, cut it square, get you a straight razor, like the same kind that you get, like in your bit, just mm-hmm. a razor. Tape that mug up under your breast. Mm-hmm. I've and then you got, no, I'm not, nah, 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 I ain't just saying heard of it. I'm saying do it. Right. Tape that mug up under, up under, so that if something happened to you, you at least you got a weapon all you the time. You got something. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got something because they taking us and we got to do something. We got to do right. something to protect ourselves. And I mean, quite honestly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want, I want, I want anybody that, that listens to this to understand that I, you know what I'm saying? They got these big ass white vans out here that's equipped to take your ass and yes. keep you alive for days in the back of a van. Yes. Before they do whatever they're going to do to you. You know what I'm saying? They, there's a video out there of a van I that is equipped that. like that. I saw Where you that. can see scratches on the mug. You can't hear nobody screaming when they close the door. Yeah. I, I, look, get some razor blades. You got two, you got two breasts. I do. You need to tape, tape, tape. If they big enough, cause well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that off. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> take get you a straight, get you one of them little, just one of them little blades about so big or whatever. Mm-hmm. Put some gauze uh, and then take that mug up underneath your breast. And if something happened to you, you put that mug so deep in his neck, in his neck. Make sure you know where that jugular is and go for it. Go for it. Go for it. And don't 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 try and take his eye. Don't try and slight nose. Push right that. There. Look, right there. Push that mug in there. 
push it in there like you playing with play doh. Stick your thumb all the way in there Ew. until you can get, until you damn near put your thumb through. Look, ew, nothing. Self preservation <laughs> is key. If one of us got the gold, nigga, it's not gonna be me if I can help it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Look, forget all of that. Oh, I didn't want to hurt him, and I love him, and I don't want to no, know, nigga. Man. If you love me and you put your hands on me, best believe one of us ain't leaving. I like it. I'm. Man, fuck the world, man. <laughs> I'm man, fuck that. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm sorry, I can't really be saying that stuff on. But man, no, <laughs> no, just no. That's all I can say is no. I told my daughter, "Hey, look, this is what I want you to start doing." <laughs> no, for real, cause she's beautiful. I believe you know what I'm saying? Like she's. I told. I, I mean, and not because of your delivery. Uh, but, <laughs> but I, fully, hey, I fully understand. Listen, it. cause I told. I said, tell your friends. Whenever I'm like, I'm glad you go out. When you go out, you going out with your girls. I, y'all, st- y'all make sure y'all stay together. Make sure that y'all don't be so messed up. Y'all know what's going on. Always keep some with about yourself. Have a good time, right. but you got to be aware too. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I said, tell your girls to do the same thing. Get you a little razor blade, put a little, so you don't cut yourself and you get it to get, yeah, because if something happens and you get caught up where you, somebody just snatch you and you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? You don't have no type of nothing that you, you can't, because, okay, you can have a CCW, you can have a taser, you can have mace. You still got to get to You still got to get to all of that stuff before you can use it. You right. know what I'm saying? If you don't care. Yes. And yeah, if that, that's and, and, and that's and that's provided they don't use something to knock your ass out with first. And True. then take all your stuff and, or or just take you and all your stuff that you need to protect yourself is laying on the ground or in your car or wherever it is. Right. Man, take take that shit to your person. Right. And and be prepared at all times. Hey, people be talking about sticking the razor blade. I'm not sure how you can comfortably do that, but there's chicks that get that off. If you can comfortably do that, do that. <laughs> put one, hey, put have one in your cheeks. <laughs> look, we laughing, but I am dead. Look, I right, am it's dead. Delivery is not, it's not the serious. subject because I don't even know how to say it. Would say it. There's no correct way of saying it. There's no PC way of saying right. it. We, I'm keeping it all the way 100. If you gotta, if you gotta shave and put something in your cheeks, tape something in your cheeks so that way if something go down, you are. Yeah, oh, you, you are prepared. Protection. You got something where you can slice somebody or you can do something to somebody where can't nobody just get that off on you. Even if I die, I'm going to hurt your ass before you kill me. You're going to be you going to be so pissed off. You know what I'm saying? This ain't going to be just a thrill killing, nigga. You're going to be mad. <laughs> you 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 it's going to be one of those ooh, this going to be it's going to get personal. Cause, Cause, I promise I'm trying. To, I'm promise I'm trying to live. I promise you. So it's gonna get personal. Cause you're gonna be mad at me. All right. So we live in. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give us our self care assignment for this did, week. Besides, who, me? Yeah. Did I have that? Oh, okay, yeah. my bad. Besides taping a razor blade underneath. Your yes, breakfast. honey, that is the self care assignment. Go get you some gauze. Get you a razor blade. Pop open your little razor blade that you're using right now to shave everything and take care of everything. Look, pop that joint open. Get you a gauze, stick that mug under your breast, tape it, honey. Tape it to you. And when you go out somewhere, you got protection no matter what. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Now, what am I doing? Well, I mean, you gave us a self care time. You really oh, okay. Need that okay. You just want to. Oh, oh, I gave us self care. Yeah, I mean, you did. I well, no, okay. I gave that self care assignment. Now, here's the other part for the medical. Here we go. Okay. Make an appointment for a physical. The most important indulgence in life is to take care of your body. It is the only one you have, and you must take it for a yearly tune-up to ensure everything is working properly. Many people are nervous about doctors and therefore skip these crucial appointments. However, they should be looked at as you moments. If you are uncomfortable with your doctor, get a new one. 
You should feel 100% in control and completely comfortable with your doctor. You work hard for those benefits and it is your right and responsibility to make sure your temple is well taken care of. Now, what I have to say about that is not all doctors will listen to you because you know, as you know, we have an aunt that has been going through a whole lot these past 10 years and she has complained to doctors and she has stated her issues with these doctors and she has told these doctors many things, but she has had to search on her own to find find things that make her comfortable things that help her situation yeah. she has to, had to have her she has had to find her own i gave her a diagnosis of, of what might be wrong with her and she said you know what that's it that's exactly what's wrong with me wow. and she when she when i gave her the diagnosis she read up on it and she saw the things that she needed to do to make her situation better yet she's been seeing different doctors for 10 years and none of them have come up with a plan that will help her be comfortable that will help her with her situation all the doctors that she has talked to has told her what was wrong with her. They didn't listen to her about what was wrong with her. Right. When she told them, this is my complaint, this is what I'm feeling, this is what's wrong, they didn't take that into consideration. What they said to her was like, oh, well, this is what's wrong with you, though. Wow. Oh, that's what you're feeling? Well, this is what's wrong with you, though. Well, that's none of that has to do with none of this. Doctors practice medicine, which is weird in itself. But all right, so your brain science real quick to wrap all of this up. You can if you think you can. Four ways to build your self-efficacy. When you face an obstacle or a setback, do you sit back, throw your hands up, and cease to fight for your goals, or do you rise to the challenge that has come your way? Are you like the little engine that could, constantly telling yourself, I think I can, I think I can, or do you allow self-doubt to control you? Do you persevere through difficulty believing that someone is better on the uh, something is better on the other side or do you feel like you are incapable of achieving success questions like these are central to our understanding of self-efficacy so here are four ways to build your self-efficacy one build one success on top of another if you've done something that was successful do something else and be successful as you continue to build you go up and you go wait man i got this okay two Observe the endurance and success of other people. So wherever it is that you're trying to get to, check other people who have done it too and mimic some of their steps. Do what they did to be as successful as you move up the ladder. Three, this is the big one. We talked about this many times on this show. Surround yourself with people who believe you can succeed. When we talked about finding your tribe, finding those good friends that are gonna big you up and celebrate you will help you keep building on that success. So in terms of like your health, if you're talking to your friends and they like, girl, this is what's wrong with you. This is a doctor that can help you. Listen to those people. They got your back. And last but not least, number four, work through your own psychological responses. Our responses and reactions to situations are developed largely by unseen psychological processes. Emotional states, stress levels, and moods impact how we view ourselves. So learn how to minimize your stress not by avoiding the situation or the challenge, but by working through that situation and the challenge. Increase your mood to a positive level and you can improve your level of self-efficacy. All right. And if you ever need help on how to do that, you can always follow us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Anchor, and email us at flywithusla at gmail.com. I swear these boxes and bowls, girl. I'm telling you what, girl. All shiny and all silky and smooth. <laughs> I'm Lady Bounce. I'm Kryptonite. And we out.